Hi, on the workbench today, I've got a power cord here. Now, I don't remember which instrument this power cord came with, but it got to be one of the review items from China, as this is actually not a power cord from North America, as you can see here, but rather it is from the EU region instead. Since this is an EU plug, so I have never used it before, that's why I don't remember where it came from. By the way, I was moving things around this morning and found this cord. Now, this is what happened. When I move a magnet closer to it, you can see that it's actually attracted to the magnet. So if I just demonstrate here, you can see that. Let me see if I can reproduce it. Yep, you can see the magnet stuck to the wire here. So that's not good. This means that the core of the wire is not made of pure copper, and it perhaps is made of steel. Now, this is not good, as we know that the resistivity of iron and steel is higher than that of copper. That's red flag number one. The next red flag is that an IEC power cord, which this one is, is typically rated for 10 amps of maximum current capacity. And if you look closely at the connector here, you will see, let's see which side has it. Not sure if you can read this, but it says 10 amps, 250 volts, which is typical rating for these C13 IEC connectors. But if you look at the printing on the sleeve here, you will see that it says 0.75 square millimeters. If indeed that is the area of the conductor used inside, this cable would probably be suited to carry only up to 2 amps if it is made of copper and the current carrying capability would be much less for the steel core with the same area. Anyway, there is only one way to find out. Let's run some current through and we should be able to get some idea. Now, here is the setup. I'm going to short the live and neutral connector on this side using a shorted receptacle, as you can see here, so that I can measure the current through this wire precisely. And uh, let me just plug it in. Now, let me actually get rid of the magnet here. And also I'm going to use a clamp meter so that I can show you guys the current going through this power cord here. So let me put the clamp meter in place and let me zero out the reading here. And in the background, I have a current limited power supply. So let me hook it up. The power supply's output currently is disabled. So now we should be able to use a setup to measure the current here. Now, of course, I have a thermal camera on standby. So later on, we can use that to take a look at the wire temperature here. So now let's actually take a look at the reference temperature here. So the background you can see that is right around 18 degrees. And the emissivity of the wire is different from the background. So you can see some slight temperature difference, but that is normal. Right now the power is off. All right, now let me enable the power supply output. And you can see we're reading two amps here. Now, let me wait for a few minutes as it will take a little bit for the wire to warm up. All right, it's been running like this for five minutes now. Now, if I feel the wire, mm, it feels a little bit warm, nothing out of ordinary. So let's take a look at the thermal image. Yeah, you can see that everything is pretty normal here. So there's no concern here. Let me take a picture so I can overlay the image here. So I would say that at 2 amps, this power cord definitely should be okay. Now let's ramp up the current all the way to 10 amps. So I'm going to adjust the power supply here. And you'll probably see the reading on the clamp meter. Now we're at 10 amps. And again, I'm just going to let it sit here. I'm not going to stop the recording because I think it's going to heat up pretty quickly. Let's actually take a look at the voltage drop here because I can already see on my power supply it is showing at roughly 5 volts. Of course, we do have pretty long wire coming in, so that is not going to be accurate. But let's take a look at the voltage reading on across the two prongs here. And we're showing 4.6 volts. So that's actually quite significant, which means we're dissipating about roughly 46 watts just in the wiring alone. And now let's take a look at the temperature here. I can already feel these are getting really, really warm here. So let's see what the temperature is. Oh my goodness, it's already 50 degrees. Let's take a picture here. And it's still rising. Now, 
I don't think it's safe to run at this current any longer, as I can already smell the melting plastic here. So let me turn it off. Yeah, and the wire is very, very warm now. And just for comparison, here I have a cord that is genuine, and you can see here, the length of this cord is roughly the same as the cord we're testing before. So let me actually put this short connector here. So let's run 10 amps through this genuine cord and get a comparison here. So let me remove that cord aside and let me connect this to the power supply here. And I'll enable the power supply and we will take a look here. So let me do that. Oh, by the way, let me put a clamp meter on. Let me zero it out. And let me enable the power supply. And I'll let it run for a few minutes. All right. It's been running for a few minutes, and the first thing you notice is that the voltage drop across the wire is significantly less. Of course, you can see that is on the power supply here. So let me actually just measure it for you. So here I have the multimeter. So you can see the voltage across these two prongs is only at roughly one volt, which is significantly less than the five volts we measured with the other power cord. So the power dissipation across this wire is gonna be much less. And if I feel the wire, they feel a little bit warm, but uh, there's nothing to be concerned about. So let's take a look at the actual temperature here. So you can see we are roughly measuring about 28 degrees, which is definitely within the safe operating range. So let me take a picture here and I'll overlay it on the video. So this genuine power cord definitely runs a lot cooler. All right, let me bring back the questionable one. So there's one thing left for us to do. I want to cut it open and see what is inside here. So let me do that. And let me see if I have a knife somewhere. Hold on. All right, back. Here is what we got. You can see that first thing first is, I don't think, I'm not sure what the material they use for the sleeve, but it's very, very weak. So I can just simply pull it. And actually it's a little bit crumbly too. I'm not sure if it's because it was heated before. But anyway, that is not the standard material. I think this is just some kind of a plastic. So that aside, you can see here are the wires. Now these are really, really thin. And if I just do a quick measurement, obviously these are multi-stranded. I can't measure it reliably, but we can get a sense here. So let's see here, we have zero and I'm just not gonna pinch it. So it's like roughly 0.5 millimeter. So give that, yeah, the rating for the 0.73 or 0.75, 0.75, that's probably accurate. That said, the wire looks copper, but it's not. So let's uh, prove it. You can see here, it's uh, attracted through the magnet. Let's do it again. You can see definitely, and this one is uh, even more pronounced. Anyway, so these are definitely not copper. So the next time you plug in an IEC cord to an equipment, especially one requires high current, make sure you are using a genuine one, as it could be disastrous if the power cord does not have the current carrying capacity. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you liked the video, please remember to give it a big thumbs up and remember to subscribe to the channel for more videos like this in the future. Your participation makes videos like this possible. Thanks for watching, and I will catch up with you next time.